So I found a post on Reddit of a guy who took 10,000 international units of vitamin D3 per day for years, then got some seriously crazy side effects, and because of that, lost faith in vitamin D supplements and the supplement industry as a whole. Let's go over the post together, analyze it, talk about where these symptoms might have come from, and also show you how you can avoid vitamin D toxicity. Okay, so the post is called Major Side Effects from Vitamin D3, Lost All Faith in Supplement Industry. He starts off by saying, I had major benefits from using vitamin D3 when I started taking 5,000 international units daily, after I had already been using a multivitamin daily for years, which contained 5,000 international units of vitamin A and 400 international units of vitamin D. Now, there are two things I want to talk about here. First are the initial benefits from vitamin D. So these are actually pretty common. Vitamin D has been shown in several studies to have a positive impact on your mood, and it also helps regulate your immune system. Now, this is usually from short-term supplementation, because long-term supplementation can have some serious side effects, as you will see in this post. The second thing I want to talk about is the multivitamin he took. I generally don't recommend multivitamins because they're not tailored to your bio-individual needs. Every one of us has different nutrient deficiencies and potential nutrient imbalances. And the idea of a multivitamin is to be a quick fix for all these things, but it usually doesn't work. That's because all it does is give you a minor intake of all the important vitamins and minerals that you need. But you don't just want to fix nutrient deficiencies, but also potential nutrient imbalances. These are at least as important as nutrient deficiencies, and a multivitamin that just gives you all the nutrients doesn't change anything about the nutrient imbalances. Unfortunately, very few practitioners know about the importance of the relationship between nutrients and their ratios in your body, which is why most diet programs that include vitamins and minerals as supplements don't work. Another problematic aspect of multivitamins is that many of them use low-quality nutrients. For example, vitamin B12 is usually added as cyanocobalamin, which is the cheapest and lowest quality form of vitamin B12. So if you look at the nutrient label of your multivitamin and it has cyanocobalamin as its B12 source, you can basically throw away the complete product. That's because you already know that they're using low quality nutrients and probably the other moral materials for the other nutrients will also be cheap and low quality. Okay, with that said, let's continue with the post. He then writes, however, the last couple of years, I've been getting 5,000 international units of dietary vitamin A from whole milk and liver and supplementing 10,000 international units of D3 daily. So he basically switched from his multivitamin to whole foods to get his vitamin A, and then he started supplementing additional vitamin D3. Now, I generally like this switch. So from a multivitamin to whole foods, because you always want to make sure to get most of your nutrients from natural sources and then only supplement targeted nutrients that you might still be deficient in or to correct a nutrient imbalance. But there are two things I want to talk about here. First is vitamin A sources. So the whole milk probably didn't do much because 100 milliliters have around 100 international units of vitamin A. It kind of depends on the milk that you get and also what the cow was consuming consumed a lot of grass or more grains. Usually the more grass-fed a cow is, the higher its milk will be in vitamin A because pre-vitamin A, so beta-carotene, is found in grass, which the cow then converts into vitamin A. What that means is that he probably got most of his natural vitamin A from liver instead of milk. Now liver is a good vitamin A source. 100 grams usually have between 5,000 to 20,000 international units, so it's really packed with vitamin A but you need to be careful when consuming liver regularly. I know it's become quite popular on the internet, especially with primal diets to eat more organ meats, especially liver, but the main drawback of liver is that, keep in mind, it's our main detoxifying agent in the body. So all the toxins that your body cannot get rid of will accumulate in the liver tissue. This can be things such as heavy metals, pesticides, pollutants, really anything that the body wants to get rid of. When you consume these toxins, so for example, when you breathe polluted air 
or when you eat a food that's contaminated with heavy metals, your body does two things. It will either try to directly detoxify this through the liver, or if it can't, because you might have a sluggish liver or it's not working fast enough, it will push these toxins into the tissue. Another problem with liver is that it is very high in copper. And many people are already copper toxic, so they have a very high copper load on their body. This is explained in more detail in a different video. But basically, when you consume liver, you are consuming these potential pollutants along with the copper. So you could actually make things worse. My advice here is to check first if you suffer from copper toxicity and also if you decide to eat liver, get the cleanest source you can find. Sometimes this means going organic. Sometimes this means buying from a local farmer. Besides the whole milk and liver, he also said that he started supplementing 10,000 international units of vitamin D3. Now, this is a fairly high dose. The RDI for vitamin D is 600 international units in the US. I know this RDI is controversial and many people would like to see it higher, but still 10,000 international units is a multiple of that RDI. So you're really talking about high dosing vitamin D here. Keep that in mind for the rest of the video. Because next, he talks about his symptoms. I will first read through all of them and then we will analyze each step by step. So he writes, I had every hypercalcemia symptom as well as fatigue, edema, loss of appetite and more. I was blaming all kinds of different things. When I read this, I actually thought to myself, this is a textbook example of vitamin D toxicity, something that very few people are familiar with. Now, the following explanation will obviously be speculation. This is not medical advice, but the nutrient relationships that I will explain are well studied. And even though this guy probably thinks he's the only person in the world with these problems, he definitely isn't. Like I said before, it's actually a textbook example of taking too much vitamin D for too long of a time. First, hypercalcemia, which is defined as too much calcium in the blood, but he probably means overall too much calcium in the body. You have to understand that vitamin D increases calcium absorption. It does this through your stomach because calcium is absorbed through vitamin D receptors that line your stomach. The problem with calcium is that it is a very complex mineral. You do need it in large amounts because it makes up our bones and teeth, but you don't want it in the wrong places either. Because when calcium comes out of solution and hardens over time, this leads to soft tissue calcification. There are many pictures online of what this looks like and it even shows up on x-rays. It's pretty crazy. Soft tissue calcification really just means that you have calcium in the wrong places, so in your soft tissue, and it usually also means that you're deficient of it in the bones and teeth where calcium is actually supposed to be. The reason for this is that your body is no longer able to keep calcium in solution. I have a video that goes over soft tissue calcification in more detail. But the essence of it is that you never want to supplement calcium by itself. And this also goes for supplements that increase calcium absorption, such as vitamin D. You always also need calcium cofactors, such as magnesium, sodium and potassium, which keep calcium in solution, and vitamin K2. From what I can tell from this post, he didn't supplement any of those. So that's why he suffered from tissue calcification. Next, he described that he had fatigue. So a basic loss of energy. Now, there are two ways of how high vitamin D supplements can cause fatigue. One is through depletion of magnesium and the other is through depletion of potassium. Magnesium is needed for your muscles and your nervous system to relax. So if you take high doses of vitamin D that directly deplete magnesium, your body will be under constant stress and your muscles will be chronically tense. Potassium is needed for the electrical charge that signals to muscle cells to contract. So also, if you're potassium deficient, you will also be fatigued because your body cannot create the signal to actually get your muscles moving. Just like in the case for magnesium, vitamin D supplements deplete potassium. So the more of them you take, the more you run the risk of being potassium deficient. The problem with magnesium and potassium is that most people are already deficient in them even without taking vitamin D supplements. So if someone then comes and takes very high doses of vitamin D without watching their magnesium and potassium levels, in 99% of the cases, they will be magnesium and potassium deficient if they weren't already before. In fact, a magnesium deficiency can even be the reason for your low vitamin D levels. 
Your body basically compensates for the low magnesium because it doesn't want to lose any more of it by lowering your vitamin D, which could actively use up even more magnesium, making your deficiency even worse. The third side effect he talked about is edema, so a natural swelling caused by too much fluid trapped in your body's tissue. Now, I can only speculate, but this is probably also due to the potassium loss that was caused by the supplement. That's because sodium and potassium need to be balanced in your tissue to function correctly. If you knock down your potassium levels, the sodium in your body will automatically be dominant over the potassium. And as you probably know, sodium causes water retention. So the main reason for his edema was probably a sodium and potassium imbalance that was also caused by the vitamin D. And lastly, he talks about a loss of appetite. This can also be due to many reasons. A possible one would just be more stress. Because as your potassium is lowered and your sodium takes over, so does your stress response. Because sodium and your stress response are tightly linked. And as you probably know, the more stressed you are, the less appetite you have. It could be that or it could be something else. It's difficult to say without knowing more. The post then continues with, I'm pretty sure I'm starting to lose weight too, literally just from stopping vitamin D3. Whatever its interactions are with vitamin A, it's obviously seriously problematic. I've heard vitamin A is important for fat loss and overall health. Let's first talk about the fat loss and then about the interaction of vitamin A and vitamin D. Now, I would assume that most of his fat loss is probably water loss because now as he's no longer taking the vitamin D, his potassium will slowly go up again, so his sodium will not be dominant anymore. Now, it could have also been the vitamin D because vitamin D does slow down metabolic rate through its increased calcium uptake. The more calcium you have in your body, usually the slower your metabolic rate because it wraps around cells and makes them less reactive to things such as thyroid hormones, which speed up your metabolism. But reversing this takes a while, and I'm not sure for how long he stopped taking vitamin D. If it's been a couple of months or even years, then this could be a possibility as well. Okay, and lastly, the relationship between vitamin A and vitamin D. He is actually spot on that you should never only get one and not the other. You see, vitamin A and vitamin D are both synergists and antagonists. In low doses, they need each other, but in high doses, they crowd each other out. If you take a high dose vitamin D supplement, it will not only deplete potassium and magnesium that I already talked about, but it will also displace vitamin A from the liver because both are primarily stored in the liver. That means all the processes in your body that require vitamin A, such as eye health or immunity, then also suffer. Which is why in the long run, vitamin D can not only be beneficial to your immunity, but also detrimental. Now, I won't read the rest of the post, but he basically goes on to say that he lost faith in the supplement industry and doesn't really want to supplement many things anymore. To be honest, I can kind of relate here. I was in a similar situation and would get side effects from all kinds of supplements all the time that people would tell me couldn't have these side effects. It was only when I learned about the relationships between the individual nutrients and vitamins that I understood that you can never look at this in isolation. Never just look at one deficiency. You need to look at the big picture. Another problem is that many supplements are sold as miracle cures. And supplement brands can be really, really pushy with their marketing, where they build up all these expectations and make promises that no single product can really keep. That said, there are good actors in the supplement industry, and if you dig deep, you will definitely find information that can change your life. Fixing my nutrition deficiencies and imbalances eliminated symptoms that I thought I had to have for the rest of my life, such as anxiety, brain fog, or fatigue. It also cured my gyno, which no practitioner was able to before then. Okay, so to wrap up this video, let me give you some helpful advice about vitamin D and how to supplement correctly. The first thing you need to understand is that it's not the wonder supplement that it's made out to be. Guides on superdosing vitamin D look at studies in isolation and don't take into account nutrient interactions. The most important interactions are that it increases calcium uptake, and it lowers vitamin A, magnesium, and potassium. If you want to increase your vitamin D levels in a healthy way, first fix your potential magnesium and potassium deficiencies. Often, if they go up, vitamin D goes up along with them without you doing anything. 
Next, if you want to directly consume vitamin D, focus on natural sources. So this could be either through more sunlight or through foods high in vitamin D, such as cod liver oil. The important difference between vitamin D foods and vitamin D supplements is that the vitamin D in the foods is organically bound and sulfated. This makes it not only more gentle on the body, but also somewhat water soluble. The organic vitamin D actually helps guide calcium to the bones and where it's supposed to be and doesn't just increase the uptake like synthetic vitamin D supplements do. And lastly, to avoid vitamin D toxicity or any nutrient toxicity, because anything in excess can become problematic, you want to keep an eye on the big picture. That usually means getting hair analysis and not a blood test to test for nutrient deficiencies and then working with someone who's experienced and who knows what they're doing to figure out a diet and supplement regimen that works for you. I have tons of videos about this on my channel, so make sure to check them out because the wrong supplements can destroy your health, but the right ones can completely change your life.